Hi, I'm Patrick Nevison, staff engineer for Safe Basements Inc. Today we'll be going over the installation procedure for the Safe Base Sabertooth Push Pier. Soilers removed near the footing at the location for each pier. This trench was over excavated for video clarity, but typically at least a two foot square is needed to work in. A series of three quarter inch holes are drilled through the footing, approximately one inch away from the wall and two inches apart, creating a trapezoidal wedge to be removed that is at least 16 inches wide near the wall. A jackhammer with 3 inch chisel bit is then used to remove the perforated section of the footing. A chipping hammer is used to clean the face of the footing and the soil is removed from beneath. A smaller chipping hammer is then used to level off the bottom of the footing. The bracket template is used to check the prepped area for a flush square fit with proper depth of soil removed for installation of the saber tooth bracket and bracket jack. Here is the saber tooth pier bracket. It is made of interlocking pieces of steel so that it is not completely reliant on welds. There are two sets of teeth to add friction between the bracket and the footing. The saber teeth may also be used to hold rectangular tubing for spanning between piers. There are also two holes to accept flange nuts with bolts that can be used when the footing cannot be prepped properly and relocation is not possible. They are used to hold the bracket level with the bracket jack while a bag of quick setting high strength concrete mix cures. There are two sets of holes on the back of the bracket for fastening to the footing if necessary. There are two slots on the bottom of the bracket to accept the rollers of the bracket jack. The bracket jack raises when the rod is screwed out and lowers when screwed in. The bracket jack is then placed in the hole near the footing and bracket placed on top and slid under the footing. An impact driver is then used to bring the bracket up tight to the footing. The reinforcing sleeve is slid over the starter and placed into the pier bracket. The locking wedges will be faced towards the wall and the weld seam faced towards the installer. The starter and locking reinforcing sleeve are then set into the bracket with the locking wedges facing the wall. The cutoff guide is placed over the reinforcing sleeve to fully engage the locking wedges on the first stroke. The drive cylinder may be removed from the A-frame for transportation and reinstalled before use. The A-frame is then set onto the bracket where it is held safely in place with the bracket jack. The standoffs are then screwed in to meet the wall. The hydraulic power pack may be started remotely using the wireless transmitter. A push pin is set up next to the wall to show any movement during installation. 
the first stroke of the cylinder is made, then the shorty is inserted to fully seat the locking wedges of the reinforcing sleeve. The cutoff guide is removed and the starter is driven the rest of the way. Push pins are then driven until refusal. The cutoff guide may be used with a bandsaw to cut the pure tube 7 inches above the main plate of the bracket. The cap may then be installed with threaded rods and nuts, leaving at least an inch above the top nut for connecting the lift cylinder. Ensure the rods are each halfway through the coupler.